Did you know that it takes about 20 hours for a terrestrial signal to reach Voyager 1? Over the past 45 years, Voyager 1 and 2 have traveled billions of kilometers into space, and they've even broken the boundaries of our own solar system. The longest-lived research mission of all time is rightly regarded as the greatest success story in space travel. But even the most impressive story comes to an end at some point. In fact, we are approaching the day when the two probes will disappear forever into the vastness of the universe. But that does not mean that their journey is over. 24.24 billion kilometers is the unimaginably large distance that now exists between us and Voyager 1. There is only one other man-made object that has penetrated comparably far into the depths of space, the identical sister probe, Voyager 2. It is located around 20 billion kilometers from our earthly home. To get a feel for these elusive distances, we should perhaps remember that the average distance between the Sun and Earth is only 150 million kilometers. However, given the extreme mission duration of over 45 years, a fundamental question arises. How do you actually plan a research program that lasts half a human lifetime? Well, the simple answer is, not at all. Because nowadays, we tend to forget that the probes were not originally intended to fly through space for several decades and even enter interstellar space at some point. While the roots of the Voyager program go back to the 1960s, the probe set off into space in 1977 to gather new insights into the largely unexplored outer planets of the solar system. And yet, what was ultimately to become NASA's greatest success story was not under a good start at the beginning. In the run-up to the mission, NASA experts knew that they would be presented with an opportunity that would not be repeated so quickly. At the time, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto were aligned with the Earth in a long arc like a kind of planetary string of pearls. This constellation only occurs every 176 years, and it was the perfect opportunity to send a space probe on an exploration mission. This is because with such an alignment, the probe can get a speed boost from the gravitational pull of each giant planet it passes. This should drastically reduce the flight time to Neptune from 30 to 12 years. The starting point seemed perfect, and NASA planned to send four probes to the outer edge of our planetary system as part of the ambitious Planetary Grand Tour. While scientists were ecstatic about this ambitious goal, Congress firmly rejected it. The project was too expensive and was therefore rejected. However, Congress did approve a smaller mission, initially called Mariner-Jupiter-Saturn 1977. The aim of this was to send two spacecraft to just two planets. But NASA engineers were optimistic from the start and designed the probes to withstand the demands of a much longer mission. They also hoped that the planned routes would extend to Uranus, Neptune, and perhaps even beyond. Finally, Voyager 1 and 2, which were identical in every detail, left Earth in the summer of 1977. The main mission was designed to last four years. And the rest is history. How the Voyager probes plunged into unknown worlds what was August 20th, 1977 for Voyager 2 was September 5th, 1977 for Voyager 1. 18 months after successful launches, Voyager 1 reached Jupiter on March 5th, 1979. Its sister probe, which described a slightly different trajectory, followed around four months later. All in all, the space probes took more than 33,000 photos of the largest planet in the solar system and its companions. Some of the most impressive images taken were of Jupiter's third largest moon, Io. This was not only impressive because of its colorful appearance, but above all because of its pronounced volcanism. At the time, the only active volcanoes known to us were to be found on our home planet. The discovery of a celestial body whose volcanic activity is ten times greater than that of Earth came as a surprise to say the least. In fact, Io's volcanism exceeds that of all other celestial bodies in the solar system. After exploring Jupiter, the Voyager probes thundered toward Saturn at a speed of 58,000 kilometers per hour. The iconic ringed planet was reached on November 1, 1980, 
and August 2, 1981, respectively. After exploring the moons, the ring system, and taking atmospheric measurements, it was time for the twin probes to say goodbye. While Voyager 1 was already sent on its way to interstellar space at this point, Voyager 2 set course for Uranus. Arriving there in January 1986, the probe added the bluish, shimmering ice giant to its ever-growing list of ringed worlds. Voyager 2 also discovered 10 new moons of Uranus, and the journey to Neptune was to be similarly successful. In fact, the probe was supposed to track down nine previously unknown satellites, although only the second largest moon of Neptune, Proteus, could be examined more closely. In fact, Voyager 2 is still the only space probe to have visited Uranus and Neptune. And if everything had gone according to plan, the images of the Neptune system would have been the last Voyager images to reach Earth. NASA had intended to switch off the cameras of both probes. However, the famous astronomer and astrophysicist Carl Sagan then made a special request. He urged those responsible to allow Voyager 1 to look back one last time. Carl Sagan's request resulted in one of the most impressive snapshots in space travel on February 14, 1990, the so-called pale blue dot. Taken by Voyager 1 from a distance of around 6 billion kilometers, it is a genuine record image. No other photo shows our Earth from such a great distance. While our earthly home can only be recognized as a tiny light blue dot, the image reminds us once again how small we are in the overall cosmic context. What the probes tell us about the mysteries of interstellar space The final chapter of the Voyager program, the Voyager Interstellar Mission, has now been underway for over 30 years. But before the boundaries of the solar system were reached, a little patience was required. In 2002, NASA proudly announced that Voyager 1 had entered the outer area of the heliosphere. This is the zone where the solar wind and the interstellar medium mix. Ten years later, the probe finally entered interstellar space. Voyager 2 reached this milestone on November 5, 2018. However, the space probe's venture into unknown worlds revealed once again how much there is to still decipher in future missions. When Voyager 1 plunged into interstellar space, the earthly scientists were astonished to discover that the interstellar magnetic field is around two to three times stronger than previously expected. Conversely, this means that the interstellar particles exert up to ten times more pressure on the heliosphere than previously assumed. However, the data transmitted by Voyager 1 also had a big catch because it was incomplete. The instrument that measures the plasma temperature has been defective for several decades. This made the cosmic insight that Voyager 2 subsequently provided all the more revealing. For the first time in history, earthly researchers were able to understand what happens when an object approaches the heliosphere to within 225 million kilometers. The surrounding plasma slows down, becomes denser, and heats up. In fact, the plasma beyond the outermost edge of the heliosphere is almost 30,000 degrees hot and therefore significantly hotter than assumed. At the same time, however, it is so thin and volatile that the temperature around Voyager 2 were surprisingly low. Before Voyager 1 passed through the heliopause, it passed through a relatively static area in which the solar wind slowed down extremely. But the space that Voyager 2 flew through had completely opposite characteristics. What these mysterious differences were all about remains to be discovered in the future. However, the guesswork of our time begins with much more fundamental questions. We do not even know what shape the heliosphere has. It could be spherical, resemble a crescent, or have a kind of comet tail. When will the Voyager program end? Isn't it fascinating that two relics from the 1970s are still functioning to this day? You have to keep in mind once again that the Voyager probes date back to a time when smartphones and modern computers were nothing but distant dreams of the future. And yet, they are still intact. Okay, admittedly, there have been a few incidents in the recent past that have raised serious doubts about the contribution of the missions. Just think of the mysterious data confusion that Voyager 1 sent back to Earth in the summer of 2022. 
The fault of the attitude control system, which mistakenly sent the telemetry data to an onboard computer that had long since been switched off. The following year, contact with Voyager 2 was also lost. NASA's flight controllers had transmitted incorrect command, causing the spacecraft's antenna to miss Earth by two degrees. But while these problems were fortunately quickly rectified, there is one unavoidable factor that will end the Voyager mission in the not-too-distant future – the extreme distance. To prolong the mission as much as possible, NASA has already shut down some of the probe systems. For example, the heating of the radiation detector on Voyager 2 so that the radionuclide battery is not overloaded. Such measures are intended to keep the spacecraft in operation until 2030. However, due to the ever-increasing distance, the researchers expect radio contact to be lost by 2036 at the latest. But what will be the fate of the probes after that? Will they simply stagger silently through space? Well, not quite. Unless something unexpected happens, Voyager 1 will pass the star Gliese 445 in around 40,000 years. In 225 million years, the probe would have covered a distance equivalent to orbiting the center of the Milky Way. The same applies to Voyager 2. The probes will still be out there somewhere millions of years from now and possibly witness things that are currently considered absolutely unimaginable. At this point, we should remember the cargo that the space probes carry with them, the Voyager Golden Records. The data disks contain fundamental information about humanity and its position in the universe. They have an estimated lifespan of 500 million years and would still be reporting on us even when our era is probably long gone. Please subscribe now and never miss a new video again.